All right, I'm here with Jonathan Butts. He's the CEO of Natural Action Technology. It's a company that takes dormant, dead water and puts life and energy back into it. Jonathan, welcome to the show, man. Thanks, Joe. Glad to be here. Yeah, man. Um, you know, this is going to be a fun one. I, I think a lot of people, um, they're thinking, what? What are you talking about, Joel? What, what, dead water? This is just ridiculous. Like, what are, you, what are you talking about? But I got a chance to meet you in person. We were at that the Biohacking Congress event in Las Vegas, and uh, you were kind of blowing my mind with all the things you were talking about. And, you know, I've seen a lot of of some of the health folks talking about this idea of structured water. And we know some of the folks from Soma Vedic and our good friends at Lila Q, but yeah, maybe, um, maybe just to start off, kind of tell people like, how'd you even get started in, in water? Um, like, I guess, uh, it was more of a mechanical industrial, uh, direction. So I'm not coming at it from anything's alive or intelligent or sacred or none of that. I'm just going, this is, you know, a substance and we're changing it into uh, a different form that was unique in itself, pretty, pretty mind blowing. So it actually started with uh, fuel mileage and automobiles. And uh, I had a history with racing and race engines. And so there was an engine side to it, right, that I was really passionate about in racing. Uh, was kind of my like uh, main study in life after the nuclear power field. So I've always been around water mechanics and engines and this type of thing, power generation. And so uh, my family business on one hand said, hey, we need a new product for the steel mill. See if you can conjure anything up. And on the other hand, somebody approached me and said, hey, you're really good with engines. And we got this technology we want you to test to, to see if it's worth investing in. And so I put it on the automobile and, you know, did the whole assembly and, uh, and we basically you put water in a cell and uh, you put it over to the engine and you retune the engine. And I didn't, I was kind of 50, 50 on it. I had an open mind, but I was like, yeah, I've heard about this stuff, but I highly doubt this is going to do anything. And to my dismay, like without much effort, immediately you could feel the change in the engine. And then I went on to verify that, yes, indeed, you can reduce emissions and increase fuel mileage with um, this addition. And a lot of people automatically drop to calling it hydrogen. Mm. But if you do a, a fuel calculation on the amount of hydrogen we're putting into the engine, the amount of energy it has and add it to the engine equation, it does nothing. So like the normal calculations and physics and you know energy balance equations that you would look at engineering wise so every engineer in the world's doing a hydrogen addition equation and going now this wouldn't work it just like i did mm -hmm. and so but i did it to go well what if this isn't hydrogen what what because there's oxygen in here too so what is this substance yeah. so i put it in the laboratory and i took it out of the vehicle and there's so much politics in the fuel mileage and the oil and the, you know, the oil dollar and all that and people's vehicles, you know, you're the last person to touch it and you're putting water into it and something breaks. Now you're the one who broke it. And I'm like, there's, there's no way this is going to be a good industry, but I wonder if this would be good for the steel mill. I wonder what this substance is, you know? So um, I didn't know anything about it, didn't know any history of it, nothing. And I just took the system, put it outside and put it through a torch nozzle and I lit it. And the moment I lit it, I knew my world changed because what I was watching was not normal combustion. And what it turned out to be was an electrical discharge um, that's implosive. And so I didn't really know much about studying implosion neither. And then I got on to Victor Schauberger. I did a bunch of tests to show that this was actually just a water vapor that's highly charged. So wow. it's basically like a vapor that's like a battery. So you put energy into the vapor and what normally when in all of our science, we're kind of taught to get heat, you uh, that the energy is moving outward and away from the source, but like radiation, right? That's the type of movement. It's going from a center outward in all directions. And that's the problem with energy efficiency today, mm. um, whether we're talking about a biological system or an automobile or a turbine plant, power generation plant, right? So basically the energy is always trying to escape and it doesn't go where we intend it. And you have these really low efficiencies and that's what they put in all the textbooks. Now we have a case for the first time where 
I, I observed something that was imploding, which means it's accelerating and concentrating towards the reaction point, which is the opposite of going away from, you know, outward out of control. Uh, the simple analogy would be pushing on a string or pulling on a string. If you pull on the string, it gets organized and follows the source of movement. If you push on the string, it just bundles up and won't go where you want it to go. Yeah. So that that's like the simple analogy I would put. At any rate, um, I started studying the vibrations in the water and the water. So we put power into the water. And if it's vibratory, um, like breathing in and out was a vibration more than like a straight line, like DC, like flat line, like dead. Yeah. And so it's able to vibrate. And not only is it able to vibrate, it takes the energy and alters the incoming vibrations. And it takes a while to do this. So it starts more or less uh, evolving its environment it's input energy like just say it was wi-fi it, it what i found it doesn't care about what vibrations are coming in it starts altering them and reiterating them and it does it in an almost a musical way so for wow. when you build these things that generate this implosive gas which turned out to be great for the steel mill by the way there, there there's some metallurgical so ba basically this water was changing the interaction of metal in the heat interface and changing the structure of the metal. So not only does the water change its own structure, it changes the structure of what it comes into contact with. So at this point, I'm not really studying like uh, human biology or plant biology or water's role in that. I'm just studying straight up electromagnetic behavior in a water interface, which is also how every cell, whether it's plant or biological is electrical interface, yeah. right? So I, at this time, I don't know, I'm really learning about fundamental mitochondrial behavior or cell behavior. And by the way, the mitochondria is in the electron transfer um, chains, uh, channels. Um, they're basically round electrolyzers, which means we have like a uh, a conductor inside of a conductor inside of a conductor, like the China doll type thing or the Russian doll, whatever, you, where you have a, a right. layer inside of right. a layer. Yeah. And, and and that's creating vibrations that harmonize so the energy is maximized. And at the end of that ETC, that electron transfer, is uh, the recombination of a proton and oxygen, which is making water again. So this water plasma that you know, we were bleeding into the engines and I did the scientific work to somewhat prove at least 90% prove that we were dealing with a, wa a charged water vapor, not hydrogen and oxygen, not hydrogen, not oxygen, not something new, yeah. just a simple natural cycle of really charged water, something similar to what you would describe as a continuous version of a lightning strike and a cloud that drops rain, right? You have yeah. a vapor, and it's highly charged. And then when it discharges, it turns into a liquid again. And uh, Tesla made some reference to this electrical discharge type also. He called it a brush discharge. And I was also able to reproduce this discharge without water as long as water was connected to it. So I 100% I knew it was electrical, like a laser. Yeah, It's a hybrid between a laser and a flame. And it uh, recognized atomic material. Meaning it would, if I would change materials, this thing behaves differently with different materials. And so it somehow it resonates with whatever material you have, whether it's platinum or gold or iron or cobalt, it only goes to the latent phase change point and it sticks there. So it goes into resonance with the, with the, with the phase change, which is getting somewhat scientific, but the latent heat is what they call it or latent heat of evaporation or whatever it's this zone where like the structure is changing of whatever you're dealing with but it doesn't rise or fall in temperature so in other words like a pot of water when it's boiling stays at 212 you, you can't put any more heat into that you just boil it faster yeah so it, so you're you automatically know if we are boiling water you're at 212 degrees roughly and so this is what it's doing to every material on the atomic table. And while it's working on it, it's changing the structure of this stuff, making a totally different allotrope out of it. Wow. I mean, so, so now I take this basis and, and we evolve um, 
and and for I'll just say that the introduction to the steel mill had some weird stuff happen as we were developing and the development somewhat got shut down. Um, we were code developing with the steel mill and it was a big one and they made some changes in their uh, management structure that were said we don't want to do this anymore and they were weird changes mm -hmm. like electrical guy went to melt and a melt guy went to electrical and the melt guy's like i don't know why they put me in electrical i've been doing this for 30 years i have zero electrical experience and and i'm standing there and he goes what happened to that project and i go well they basically canceled it and he was like huh you know and i don't know if that was intentional or not but i do know a lot of the guys in the mills when i was showing demonstrating the technology were like some of them were in Jubilee expressing how I told you there was a conspiracy block and this stuff. And the other guys that were denying that were like, well, I don't know, you know, but they were seeing it there. And I'm like, hey, guys, this technology actually is really old if you look at the history. Sure. So I thought I kind of discovered something. But actually, when I went back into history, there was this person, that person. There was 20 people who were recorded in history studying this stuff. Yeah. And so now I'm like, OK, this is legit. And we keep like uh, sugarcoating this to where it can't come out. And it's simple. It's extremely simple that we can make improvements to water if we understand how the water works and build a relationship with it rather than view it as a chemical like I did that I was going to force around yeah. with my magic recipes. Yeah. Right. And I love what you said. A couple of things. I'm, I'm just going to cut you off. I mean, sure. Amazing. You're the background because anybody that's going to listen to this podcast is already going to say this guy's full of BS. He's trying to sell me some snake oil. And I love the background, the story of like I had I wasn't trying to discover this. I was working on this mechanical side. I could care less. And then the more you just kept discovering, it, it led to like more curiosity and like, wait, what is happening here? And I also like like what you said is. I, I never really thought of that. I would have just thought, um, you know, like hydrogen, everyone, the rage is in the biohacking community is drinking hydrogen water has like an extra hydrogen there and it's less oxygen. You're like, no, 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 that's all the same. It's H2O. It's just the different charge that the water is actually getting. So that's really, that's fascinating. Um, and then I'm just, okay. So, so what's the problem then with our current water system right now? Like what, what the way we all, are drinking just regular tap water or even, and we can probably talk about that later, you know, filtration or I have a reverse osmosis and I have this and you think you're, I'm healthy, I'm doing the best, right? I have the best system ever. So, but what's, what's the biggest problem right now with our water system? So basically, if we really simplify, um, water has somewhat of a memory, though I wouldn't say it's exactly identical to how we interpret memory. Um, because you could have like a piece of steel and bend it and then it has a memory, uh, uh, you know, it changes its structure as you start to stress it. So maybe the universe is just like way more simple than we realize and, and memory is just a recording of, of where we've been in an emotional state or how we feel right. Yeah, and, and we're made out of water and our brain is especially like made out of water it's like the highest degree of water content in our body It's pushing up towards 90% for a healthy brain. And so I even started to think at one point, I'm like, geez, what if the brain works based on how water works after what I've seen? That's not too far off. Yeah, um, I do. You know, there's always an individual soul element, but maybe the mechanics of how this brain computer works and how our cellular body works is very much like an authentic intelligence rather than an artificial intelligence, which is a little bit more like programmed, like, hey, we want this to happen. So we're going to allow the computer to adjust everything until this happens. But the, yeah. the, the human says this is what should happen, whereas water is going now, this is what should happen. And I change with the real world, real time, all the time. Um, so to get right to your question, if you stress water out, which if I define stress from an engineering perspective, it's pressure, pressure is stress, right? Um, radiation, receiving radiation can be stress and there's thresholds. So like a little bit of stress is okay. And we might equate this to our human lives. Like if you have no stress whatsoever, you're probably not going to be motivated to evolve. If you have too much stress, you're probably going to get sick. And so basically, if you look in nature, water never is, is pumped for long periods of time in its maturation level in a straight line and a straight pipe under high pressure, where the ideal drinking water occurs is about halfway down the mountain. 
after it comes out of the ground at 39 degrees Fahrenheit, which all around the world, the water comes out at 39 degrees Fahrenheit in a classical spring. And then it warms up as it goes down the mountain and it picks up minerals out of the rocks and it goes through all sorts of circular rolling motions like waterfalls back roll. Um, when you separate water, it charges up on its own. This is very key to how we're seeing more energy come out of the system is basically water wants to be together so much that when you pull it apart, um, it's the hydrogen and oxygen start to charge up like let's just say magnetic, even though that's technically incorrect, yeah. that it, it wants to come back together. And when it does, it winds itself together and spins together. And so on a parallel, when we study, and it has to be free to do this in a straight pipe, it can't turn, it can't rotate. It, matter of fact, if you watch water in a straight pipe, you can't even see it moving. It just looks like it's still, even though it might be going by at 40 miles an hour, you just wow. see nothing but, but clear when you study this. So in the end, the water seems to hold on to this stress and to relieve this stress, you need to breathe it, uh, put it under a vacuum, then back to pressure, vacuum, breathe in, vacuum, right? Pull in, um, rotate it, um, which stratifies the hydrogen and oxygen structures, um, which turn out to be probably not ever H2O, but big bands of H's in a circle and big bands of O's. So we, we just like multiply it up. Like there's what constitutes real water is many H's working together. Simulating carbon is the first step we see when we get really deep into this. Mm. And then oxygen in the same ratio pinned around it. And they kind of wind around each other like a wreath. If, if you picture how a wreath is wound, and that I think would be the future model, even though it's a theory right now. That's what we came up with by visually observing this lit uh, like laser where we're actually watching the water illuminate and watching it work with other things. Whereas I would have never got that knowledge studying liquid water. So I just, yeah, I came to the conclusion that if this is water vapor, it's still water. Let's apply these principles to liquid water to expose what we don't see. And then we went on to study, you know, looking into the water with different instruments. UV spec is one of them where we scan the water for different wavelengths. And that's how we test to see if we're one way we test to see if we're changing the water besides taste, feel, interaction with other substances. But long story short, we basically stress the water and now there's stress stored in the water and then we drink the stress. And then the stress is dispersed to the body. That's skipping all science. Yeah. We stress it, it stores the stress, we consume the stress and we shorten that circle up where it's the long-term stress is getting more and more and more. Because basically, let's just look at this. The waste goes into the river, a couple miles downstream is the water processing plant. They filter everything out of it with pumps and chemicals. They pump it back up to your water tower and it comes back to you. Where in nature, it would go all the way to the ocean evaporate and you know get in the salts and purify there and then uh, end up in the sky then back down deep into the earth and we're shortening that cycle and that's where the deuterium starts to go away when you get this full cycle right so like that's what you hear about deuterium depleted water well when you naturally cycle water the deuterium drops and it's mm -hmm. like okay we're short cycling the water and exposing it to more and more stress it used to take say a hundred days for this cycle to happen. And now we're doing it in one or two days and it's all stress because we're like, man, we got to hurry up and fix this. Right. And right. so we like cut corners and uh, don't pay attention to water as a possible living entity, even though like without water, there would be zero life. And so back in the day, I wondered, I said, well, man, it's got life in it and, and putting energy in it kind of brings the life back. But it's kind of more of the same or we're just like shoving a lot of energy in there. Right. And so how do we work this equation like nature would do it? And uh, turns out the motion uh, and, and the pressure drops uh, going to a vacuum, relieving the squeeze on the water and materials have a huge influence equally. And the more motion you get, the more susceptible the water is to absorbing vibrations of materials, which in a river would be the rocks and the minerals being shaved off and the aggressive motion of the water and then the relaxation. And when you look at a river system, it's constantly getting aggressive and then relaxing and getting aggressive. So it's like breathing, right? Yeah. With very fast motion and cooling down 
and heating up. And, you know, one very simple telltale is if you chop down all the vegetation around a river, the direct sunlight actually kills the river. The heat, which is heating it up, is basically reducing its structure due to heat radiation. And so uh, getting to know water and find its balance points are uh, very much like having a relationship with another human being and finding out what their limits are and what they aren't and all waters are different. And so in the end, it goes all the way to a science where you look at uh, what you call crystal formation as the water evaporates under a microscope. And this is not like Emoto's work. This is not freezing it or putting intention into it. This is characteristic like DNA of the water and the mm -hmm. DNA either has like a stress mode and it turns out your blood does the same thing. So when you're chronically ill, you start to see a pattern show up in the macro analysis of the blood. And this has nothing to do with what's in the blood. This has to do with an energy pattern that's in the blood, not material, not wow. poison, not, not stuck proteins or too many carbohydrates, none of that. And so then the same is true for the water. And it's a right angle pattern, German scientist by the name of Andreas Schultz. And so he went around the globe and everywhere where there was industry dumping stuff in the water, it took on a right angle pattern and whether it had toxins in it or not. And yeah. then he correlated it to the blood. And so now we have some validation of the subtle energy by how the water grows something. And in this case, it's growing crystals of what was in the water to begin with. Your calciums, your magnesiums, all the normal minerals are totally different in a group. Then they, if we had analyzed it as, okay, let's look at the calcium in the water, that's, we would go, okay, there's calcium in the water. It didn't change. There was a hundred parts per million calcium before there's a hundred after nothing changed in the water. But when we look at it under the microscope, it's very beautiful pictures painted by the dendritic crystal growth versus right angles. Um, and then it, on when your it, website, I just want to say ahead. if people go there, they can see it's actually really cool. And I'm glad that you guys do that. The, you can see the like hexagonal shapes and how uh, there's like photos of uh, differences of like dead water. And then you show all these beautiful, like just shapes of a more structure, structured or charged water. It's, it's really interesting to see it. And I love that because seeing is believing and it makes more sense. I think even for you, right? Like very analytical guy going on your, you know, it's like, well, let me research more. Let me see what's really happening. And then when you see it, it's like, okay, there's something different going on here. So if anybody wants to check, go to your, what the website, natural action uh, tech, and you can see some of the studies and stuff that you guys have. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's re it's super cool. Cause now we have like an identity with water, like water from, you know, this lake and that lake are, they have their own signature, like DNA and character and people who are born around that water tend to acclimate to that water, right? Mm. Even if it has negatives, people evolve and turn those into positives. And so there's an evol a shared evolution between the two. So if you start caring for your water and you're from that region, like the, uh, the gift back is, is that much better in my opinion than say, if I bought water from like New Zealand, uh, my body might be like, uh, you know, this is new, even though it might be better water. There's the process of getting to know these unique yeah. waters with the body, yeah. right. Cause of memory, um, because of buffers. And then in the, in the end of it, in this journey of living water, right. Cause you say this living water, it's like, how could this be? But then it's like, wait a minute, nothing will really grow biologically without water. So there's something down in there that really explains things that's fundamental, right? Sacred element, you know, earth, air, wind, fire, you know, water, yeah. uh, all these. And so in about 2010 and earlier than that in Germany, a very advanced microscope called the atomic force microscope. And we don't really publish this on the front side of the website, but we do uh, like educational webinars on the back side. And we show pictures and PowerPoints of all this, uh, what's going on. And so on the UV spec, which is uh, what Gerald Pollack does to look at water and many other people where we just kind of scan like a certain wavelengths into the water and we go, if there's a reaction, then we have a resonance with this size of wavelength. And, and to simplify, it'd be like, if there's something one inch in the water, I'm gonna shoot a one inch wavelength at the water. And if it hits, then we know we found a one inch object in the water, right? And so in the end we see, uh, uh, it's nanometer, but I'm just gonna say we see a value of two in the water. 
And what they found under the atomic force microscopes is that there were solid cells of water at room temperature. There's nothing else. This is ultra pure water forms little round three dimensional cells at a unit of one a piece that pair up together like couples. And so then you get a sum of two. And when we scan, we see a huge spike of coincidences of two, 200 nanometers in this case, really small like cells. And then they assemble to simulate everything we see in biology, red blood cells, spirals, DNA, mm. bacteria, everything. So water is basically when it's alive is capable of self-assembling and simulating everything we see in biology. And then when we back test it to find out what was in there, it's 100% pure water. <laughs> so wow. in the end, we have pictures of water growing itself. That's where science is today. That's not my science or our company's science. That's the collective science of the globe wow. is that living water actually grows things out of itself that simulate the beginnings of life. That's, that's so amazing. And even when I was just diving into your website, I was just like, wow, like it made me realize just how connected we all are in this world. And I think what you said in the beginning too, it's like, I mean, I just took it as H2O or I just took it as, yeah, okay, it's water. I drink it. I, I need water to live. But the more I was diving into the science and what you guys were talking about, I was just like, wow, I almost felt like just humbled by like this, such a simple thing, but like how grateful that I am to just be a part of something like that because in what it's really doing. And I'm just thinking how disconnected many of us are, including myself from nature and, and what's happening. Um, so it was really cool. And I mean, it's just such a, was such an appreciation for simple water, uh, really. Um, I've been curious though, what would you say to like people, you know, that are probably listening to this and they're like, dude, you lost me. Uh, you know, you're talking about, I've been drinking crystal geyser water for years. I have no health problems. So what's up with that, Jonathan? What, I mean, what do you, what do you tell these people? And, and uh, crystal geyser, I really like that water too, by the way. Uh, oh, okay. So, so I'm, by the way, none of us are affiliated with crystal geyser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but basically, uh, you know, when you take water out of its in, in normal environment, whether it's coming into your home as a pipe or whether we buy a bottle of, of bottled water that's good, like yeah. we're talking about, as it goes through that process of being bottled and trapped and kind of plastics, really not a natural container. And I'm not, I don't get worked up about like uh, knowing what I know about water, about like all this minute stuff, like, yeah. oh, the, you know, you got a little plastic in your water. Now you're going to lose your testosterone. Your life's going to be ruined. So you got to yeah. buy this type thing, right? Good water has the ability to work with your body and work with toxins, right? So in the end, um, basically these devices, which we call revitalizers or water structuring units or water vitality units uh, took off in the history of Victor Schauberger, who is just excellent at the macro subjective analysis of water. He was a forester. I uh, highly recommend, you know, for a good read on getting deeper into this yet in a not too much of a scientific way, more of a philosophical subjective way Yeah. Um, about his relationship being a forester and what he learned uh, from older cultures. So a lot of the stuff we're talking about today was handed down through the Amish communities and the Hutterite communities and like they all and, and uh, uh, biodynamics and Rudolf Steiner, right? They were all doing this as part of their health, earth health to human health mechanisms. And uh, it, it's, uh, they make a good argument if you have the real experience with the different ways of growing things, a mechanical way versus more like a Native American way where you, you know, you're honoring what's growing and interacting with it like it's all alive. Yeah. You know, which water is a good, you know, bridge there, uh, in my opinion. But, you know, more or less, it, it has a benefit and it has distinctly different behavior. Um, and it's practical and it's more spiritual or subjective. So there's both like a good water revitalization unit, like you're shower will probably hardly grow mold anymore and mm. the scale buildup will be softer not harder it won't take anything away but when you go to wipe it up it it, it it's soft 
And so it tends to wash down the drain or your body's now has calcium that it can absorb. Whereas before it was the calcium was dominated by the stress of the water and the water was squeezing the calcium, making it more like concrete mm. and your body can't break that down as well. Um, so basically there's a very rapid change in the properties of the water by relieving the stress. And uh, that's what these devices tend to do is relieve the stress in the water. And then uh, almost everybody I know, even the doubters who genuinely try these types of technologies has an aha moment and they're all different. Some people are like, my dog won't drink the other water anymore. I stopped using the unit and the dog started drinking less water. It would wait till it was dying of thirst before it went over to the bowl and the drink. Then I put, then I did this again and the dog was going over there right away and drink at horse farms. You know, mm -hmm. we had, we just did one trough. We bought a, a inexpensive unit and treated one trough and the horses are 90% drinking out of that trough only now. Uh, I even know people who do coffee enemas and, and the coffee absorbs so fast in their blood when you structure the water and do it, that it gives you heart palpitations <laughs> and, and wow. multiple, multiple people do that and go, I didn't really see nothing obvious until we did that. And then I was like, Holy crap, what is yeah. happening? And they were like, I can't do coffee enemas anymore. And I'm like, no, just use less coffee. Right. Yeah. And that's the yeah. whole story is that water is a catalyst for all biological life. And if you make a minor improvement or major, depending on how you want to look at it, the whole process begins to gradually change. So you see like uh, gut bacteria will change if you start drinking mm -hmm. a living water versus a dead water. Uh, and these little things don't, uh, it's not instantaneous a lot of times. And, and in these devices in particular alone don't do filtration. We do filtration also because it's important to clean the water as much as you can without wrecking it. What but kind of filtration if, do you, do you do, or do you recommend for people? Um, carbon block, um, it, you know, in, in particular, certain types of carbon block have a uh, positive signature on the water where they don't degrade it. No, normally filters, you're shoving the water so hard through a media that you're kind of tearing it apart and stressing it. Yeah. And carbon blocks have like a bunch of worm channels and tons of surface area. So it's almost like it's simulating riverways, in, in my opinion. Yeah. And one of the biggest things water responds to is higher structure of carbon, like diamonds or graphite or graphene, yeah. right? Coal or activated charcoal, not so much. So like a charcoal, people go, oh, look, this carbon filters 10 bucks. The one I get at Home Depot. And yep. it's like, no, that's not going to help the water. It's the wrong, that's the wrong style of carbon here. We want carbon more like a diamond. Uh, so carbon block is actually squeezed like you would make an artificial diamond. It's not quite as far, but there's a lot of pressure squeezing this. And, and the, the carbon responds with an increase of structure, just like with a diamond. And so uh, in the end, before or after like the revitalization units, the quality is really good with the carbon blocks and they last. This is the major difference. Most filter companies test their filter right away and they don't subscribe to like the test batteries that are end to filter life because if they did that you would see the filter wasn't really <laughs> working that good anymore yeah and the carbon blocks sometimes will last for i've had mine for almost three years and i haven't noticed a single uh, and we do it at the sink where it's the drinking water right i don't do it on the whole home because then we burn up the filter really quick right right and the pressure drop across these is too much so i have like a separate spigot like ro except ro is you know strips everything out of the water and then you got to put stuff back in it um to kind of get it to go right after that point yeah. ro water being like distilled water where it's good for flushing your body um but it's not so good for daily drinking uh, you'll flush well but then you know you're kind of flushing too much and not delivering quick minerals to your body which mm. is really good spring water will actually bring balance and energy to your body that you feel if you're in Idaho at 7,000 feet and you drink out of a spring. I was 24 years old. The first time I did that in Montana and I knew the moment that water hit my mouth, there was something different, but I never thought for a second, there would be a way to mimic nature and at least get some of that back in everybody's home. Cause I knew you know, with 8 billion people, nobody's lining up at the springs and we keep wrecking them as right. we go to so the odds are terrible 
Uh, so it was really cool later on in life to kind of evolve into, uh, hey, I knew this about water when I was 24, but I had no language or mechanism or yep. a thing. And everybody would agree too. even people who know nothing are like, oh, there's nothing compared to that spring water up there out of this right. you know, draw, you know, so everybody agrees without the science, then you bring the science and people start to question it. And then the science builds up to a point where it's somewhat irrefutable. And uh, underneath it all, what another thing I like is in the future, these are the things I think human beings need to understand from a science perspective. Transmutation, that elements change their, you know, uranium doesn't stay uranium. It, 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 you know, the big elements like uranium evolved back down into the solution. Like iodine is what you take when you get radiation poisoning. When, when uranium breaks apart, it leaves a daughter of iodine, which is the solution. If, if you get uh, hit by the, the older element, right. Mm -hmm. And hydrogen's always evolving. It's evolving into deuterium and tritium. And, you, you know, so these, these atomic table they teach is kind of static and it's not everything's changing even all the way down to protons flip into neutrons and when you deal with implosion or inward movement you don't have the radiation component which is harmful so they they kind of i had a nuclear background so they somewhat teach that yeah this stuff can happen but it comes with danger a lot of danger you know and and you, you'll get hit by this unseen danger and it's deadly and so we have to do all this stuff but if we reverse the equation and take radiation to implosion uh, this stuff is rewound and recombined into new elements. So what you would call fusion. Uh, a lot of people, you know, the science puts out that, oh, no, fusion is not possible. And we proved this incorrect. So don't look anymore. But actually, water is kind of doing it all the time to different mm -hmm. degrees. So technologically, water will advance with the human consciousness and help advance the human consciousness. And likewise, the liquid version. Um, you know, of drinking water, watering crops or whatever can be altered and nothing wears out with the technology. This is what I think is super cool. It represents this idea that we don't have to consume things to make things better. So most of the revitalization technologies that we're talking about don't wear out. Uh, 10 years later, they test the same on control laboratory tests. And we've, we've been around for longer than that. So I'm able wow. to test things that old. And some of them even actually show better, like they season themselves. They, you yeah, know, so, so talk really quickly just about, you know, um, for people, just some of the products that you guys are making so they can kind of have an idea. You've mentioned some of the house stuff and the RO kind of like the filter, but I, you also have handheld stuff. So kind of just, yeah, tell people about some of the products that you guys are making. Yeah, the uh, handheld is designed for if you're traveling or if you're at your sink and, and you want to do that. They're not as aggressive in the vortex process as the inline stuff. But nonetheless, uh, when we were talking about Schultz's work and the star patterns versus the square patterns, the pictures on the website, um, those, those tests were done with the portable. So typically we take our weakest flowing device and run all our tests with it. If we have any material changes or we're developing, how can we do this better uh, than we were doing it? So the portable device is basically a funnel with what, what is called a flow form in it. And the flow form um, has ingredients uh, where we make a dielectric or a semiconductor, um, which is basically small conductors in an insulator mixed together, right? Your computer crystals and switches and are, all, are the same thing. You take glass and you put uh, specks of silver in there and now you can get a semiconductor to oversimplify. And so you pour the water over this semiconductor and the surface layer has a spin reaction just from turbulence. And so the, there's a series of spheres in there. Um, so a geometry, if you will, that somewhat, uh, people say it simulates rocks. So I don't, kind of and kind of not. Um, it, it simulates some vacuum geometry or separating the water and coming back together again, like a rock sitting in the middle of the stream, like blocking flow. If what happens is you get a left and a right spin as the water goes around that rock and that opens up the water and clears memory is the uh, theory behind that. And there's good basis for it. And then it picks up uh, the properties to just what degree of structure, right? So we use shungite as one of the additives to the dielectric 
And the shungite is uh, actually what they call paramagnetic. It comes from the North Pole in Russia. And I demonstrate to people all the time, we take a magnet in this form of carbon, um, basically sticks to a magnet. And so you have some magnetic properties going on uh, dispersed throughout the flow form. And some of our more advanced units actually use special arrangements of magnetics to further add life force charge to the water. Um, so that's been my fun is studying all the history of this stuff, which none of it's new. Yeah, none of it. The, the, the further I go back, the more I find people really looking at this stuff. So a lot of my studies go to the late 1700s when the scientists were really clear in mind and had a pure observation because they didn't have all these engineering equations telling them how everything was going to come out. Yeah. And so they were making the equations and the equations they were making are different than the equations we have in physics today, meaning I'm pretty sure somebody lopped off the other half of the story uh, because there was people sure. raising their hand going, wait, wait, that's not what I said. There's this other side to it. And, uh, you know, the dictionary and the educational system at the collegiate level all the way back then was like, no, nah, we're not going to allow this. They just Talk scrubbed it. it. They just scrubbed it all out. Sure. I well, mean, you look God, at Tesla's like <laughs> Tesla's work. He's like, he's about to tell you something and it's like, no, there's no answer. It was scrubbed <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. You know? um, I'm curious too, you know, and this is not to bad mouth anybody uh, or any other companies, because that's not what we're here to do. And I know that's, yeah. that's not your take either. I mean, you're just, you're, you're here with an abundant mindset and you're just trying to serve and deliver good stuff to the people. But I know I'm going to get questions about this uh, and like, well, and I'll just give you an example. Like I have a Soma Vedic, like it supposedly structures the water and um, they've got some good data. Like I use distilled water and then structure it. Am I good? Or would you say, no, Joel, you could still benefit from a, 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 a you know, a revitalize, a revitalizer. Yeah, definitely. I mean, let's just say you're uh, in the airport and you got to buy uh, uh, Dasani water. What about, right. uh, yeah, besides Dasani, what if I just want to get a glass of wine? Can I put it through the, uh, Oh, absolutely. The, okay. the wine. Yeah. I, I don't think we've published it to our site yet, but we have, there's panels of people who like judge beer and whiskey and winemaking and, uh, they've been doing it a long time and, and, uh, they tested whiskey, uh, beer and wine and white wines, red wines. And they came up, they let the panel review it, sommeliers, all that stuff. Right. And uh, they were like, in every way, shape or form, we generally view this as an improvement in taste and feel um, yeah. across the board uh, yeah. smooth and smoothness, right, is our quality. Yeah. So now you can and there's a, a science behind this from a chemist standpoint of electronegative and electropositive. So carbon next to oxygen is the most electronegative substance on 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 earth basically that which means it will store or, or or absorb electrons from surrounding bodies so if if you're uh, electropositive and you come to me electronegative i'm gonna kind of grab some of your electrons yeah. you know and when we as long as we're in the proximity i'm gonna take the stage right it's what it what it kind of amounts to to put it in layman's terms yeah and so the oxygen and the carbon are really what we work on um, because we talked about that simulation of, of uh, water, like simulating life. Well, it also simulates carbon. And we kind of know this because we can ignite it and it will behave like a fuel. And we can also put a little fuel and the implosion will turn to an explosive. So we see this chameleon effect going on on water where it's like, oh, I got a little bit of this. I'm going to copy this behavior and amplify it, or I'm going to turn this toxin off make it so it's not so radical to the body. And I'm going to grab it and hug it and not let it go as I'm going through the body, right? Which if we all detox by drinking water, water goes in and grabs the toxins out of the blood. So if it came with them and it has the ability to hold and grab more than it did before, which is kind of the hardcore mechanical of what we're talking about, that the hydrogen is improved and the oxygen is improved in the water, both. Yeah. Uh, not just alkali water and more oxygen or acid water and more hydrogen, both are improving. So, um, you know, it, 
the Samovetic and other range devices where we're basically creating a field and the water is subjected to that field is yeah. just much more intensified when we're flowing the water in the way that it wants to be flowed yeah. over materials that the water really responds to. That's that it's just kind of more concentrated and intense. Yeah. Um, and happens faster. Right. Yep. Um, and, and there's less interference because the interaction is one of being inside of the water. Yep. And that's the difference is the intensities are usually much different. And we have no idea what the limits are. I will tell you this, like some of our like magnetic devices at first, they're like too much charge for people. And, and I'm sensitive to water. So if I go to like a really good quantifiable hardcore naturopath, who like has on medical record correct, you know, correcting severe problems in people. So these aren't like, you know, oh, Reiki, I'm healing your body right now. And it comes back 24 hours later. And these are like hardcore permanent changes people. And so we develop with human sensitives more than anything. The human body is the best instrument. So yeah. we use them for development. They detect the differences better than our machines. And th some of the people that, you know, scanned me and worked on me said like too much energy in the water is not good for you. Mm. You, you have to find a balance point. So I can take a number of different units and method. And for me, you know, our regular device, one pass through the portable device, you just pour it through the funnel, right? It comes out the other end into your glass and you drink it. That for me is okay. Good. Like daily drink. If you're going to drink a lot of this, this is what you would do is drink this version. Yeah. Uh, if you were going to go more towards medicine water, which is where I really like to go with this and start programming it. Yeah. Um, there, there's companies, I don't know if you've seen, but there's companies that make uh, charging pads yeah, and they yeah, have open source programming the water. So if you have an ailment, you look up the program, you set the water on this pad. Well, water that's receptive or clean energetically isn't full of noise, right? Cause we're talking about really communication here. The essence of life and communication is really what we're talking about, which we don't really understand the universal language, but I have a feeling it's simple. It's not complicated. And human beings would tend to look at it as like hieroglyphs and yeah. this complicated translation. And I think it's very simple, like breathe just in the health world. Like yeah. human yeah. beings do a lot better if they take time to stop and breathe. Right. Totally. Simple. What, ab what about, um, you know, another one that I, I don't, I'm not too familiar with, but I know a lot of people hear about it. it's like the Kagan water. And they're telling you that we it's single file organized water, um, uh, is there any data to that? I know you're smiling, but it's like, does that even make sense? Or are you just more like, you know, Could, sure it, it might work, but it's, you don't need all that. Well, I, and, and I'll be straight. Kangen water works because it's, it's basically what I spent all my years studying was electrolysis across plates yeah. and the response to the water. And so Kangen basically marketed alkali as the reason. And that, that's absolutely ridiculous because you could poison somebody with alkali water. Alkali alone doesn't mean anything. Yeah. So the quality your body of alcohol alkalizes everything once it comes in anyways, right? It, it was, it, yeah, you're you're yeah. totally acid and then as it and it's moving towards the alkali, right? Because your blood is alkali. But it's very small alkali. 7.2 to 7.4 is the the blood right so the whole process goes from acid to alkali traveling and then it switches again in the inside and the outside of the cell so when you walk the pathway it's alkali then it's acid then it's alkali then it's acid and you know there's these processes that all have to be in balance so um you know nature and the human body tend to work pretty good between six and eight and, you know, if you drink five and nine and you're not doing that all day long too much, it's your body's going to rearrange that. And it might be the mineral acid, benefit, like a humic acid or a fulvic acid. Right. Yeah. Really, really good for the body when taken in the proper amounts. Yeah. Right? And so we get to tuning your body to the proper amounts and communing with water may be a way to understand what your proper amounts are. Right. Uh, having a relationship of paying attention to how you feel when you drink the water. And, and that's what you, you said about people's differences, right? And, and natural biomimicry versus electromechanical. With, with Kangen, you're basically putting amperage, which is disorder and heat into the water. At the same time, the water is absorbing other elements that are positive. And in the end, the reason why alkali Kangen water works 
is because they're favoring the oxygen side um, and the toxins are binding to the hydrogen side. So classically in water, hydrogen is kind of like your garbage man, but you want your garbage man to be good. Like you don't want them to show up and dump half your can on the lawn as they're putting it in the truck, right? So you need both. So marketing tends to oversimplify and lean on one or the other. And then the, your average person calls that a science and they go, well, I thought alkali water was good for me. And it's like certain types of it are, you know, Got and it. certain types yeah. of acid water are good for you. And a good water can get in a line if it needs to. Like they talk about it gets in uh, there's Russian science that says, you know, it gets in this line so it can travel through the aquaporines. Nobody's actually ever done a study to totally prove that in any way, shape or form yet. Even though we talk about how would we do this study? We, we were actually working with doctors in Manchester University prior to COVID and they were wanting to run this test, but they were gonna look, they didn't care how the water got in the cell. What they were gonna study is the mitochondrial function and see if the efficiency improved. Mm. Because they're like, in the end, the cell needs to work better. If the cell works better right. with this water, that's good for everything and all things as far as the body regenerating themselves. And the reason why they wanted to do that is because they saw that behavior in the water revitalization process. They don't always see that through filtration. Matter of fact, with the kidney patients with RO water, they see a lot of problems. Wow. And so, you know, one of, one of our guys who, who came to work for the company basically said, it didn't heal my kidneys that were failing, but man, did it make my after dialysis process a lot easier. The cramping was way less. I had more energy, right? And, and so, you know, the doctors that are on the cutting edge see that the RO water being reinfused with potassium and sodium like they do, they rebalance the electrolytes and do all this analysis of the blood during di dialysis they're basically starting to recognize that the water's off and the native Americans recognize no matter how much we clean the water, it's still not right. So there is a human connection consciousness that is felt by this and it's not for everybody. Um, we're probably, we have a really good open return policy in 90 days. We don't hassle people at all. Uh, we just like to know what their reason is so we can learn from it to see if yeah. we can get a broader bandwidth, but it's at 98, 99% non-return and and these items aren't inexpensive it's not like they're 20 bucks yeah. right it, these are significant items that people would be highly incentivized to return we do uh, have issues with people over claiming what the results will be and yeah. we get some returns from that and, and you know in our sales you know deal and and to me water is the binder of all things to harmonize all things not the thing that solves your problems directly yeah it, it, yeah that's my take on it. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, any exciting projects that you're working on right now? Yeah, uh, we're going back into uh, the water plasma again and uh, maybe potentially some fuel mileage stuff and uh, mining, uh, separation of material and transmutation, allotropic transmutation material, raising the quality. Um, we're starting to tap into a little bit of, uh, over unity energy systems, which, um, those are kind of pinned down by science right now. So science says the best you can get out of a system is 30% in the engineering cycles. And then really what we get is like 10 or maybe 20. And so there's a lot to go before we even break the sound barrier, if you will. Um, and overall, it just has to do with the uh, state of the planet. And I'm not one of them people are like, oh, my God, CO2 is going to kill the planet overnight. And we're all going to die. I'm not a fear based guy at all. Yeah. I think that's all sold because a human being or a plant or water in fear or in stress. Let's change the language. So the yeah. plant, human or water in stress. Um, cannot epigenetically evolve because it's in survival mode. This is what they talk about with your nervous system, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. Yeah, when your body sure. goes into stress, it can't evolve anymore. Yeah. You can't adapt to the Wi-Fi. If, if, if your body's de-stressed, I'm confident with what I've seen that the water will actually adapt to the Wi-Fi, suck it in, absorb it, rearrange it, and, and call it a positive energy change in the end if we're forced to be faced. Is it the best way to do it? No. 
in my opinion, there's other ways to communicate. You know, Tesla talked about these submarines represent these other ways to communicate that are non-harmful because they use natural earth frequencies. So mm -hmm. again, copy nature. And yeah. so if we if we travel our communication like Tesla did on a low frequency like the earth, it's low power and it can carry more information per unit cycle too. So I mean, everything just got really backwards on it. Um, and I tend to look at it like, hey, the universe likes to keep it fun for everybody. And this stage in this scene was, hey, let's do everything backwards for a few hundred years and see what happens. And uh, now oh, we're man. like, hey, just do it the opposite and, and it'll start to correct itself and, and believe yeah. that nature is powerful enough to correct herself yeah, and that the universe sure. doesn't want to destroy us all. Yeah. Um, I want to I want to run into some uh, lightning questions. But uh, lighting around questions. But before sure. I do, any, anything that I didn't ask you that you wish I had? Uh, no, I mean it gets more technical as we go. But I, I and I was probably technical enough. So you were pretty I, technical I, today. I almost feel like I'm gonna have to go back and like uh, not dumb it down for my audience to say that anybody's dumb. I gotta dumb it down for myself and say, okay, what did he say? Um, but this was some high level stuff. I think um, it's it's definitely gives. I mean, it just really shows like. I mean, this is beyond just um, some filtration system. And I hope people like at least walk away with that and go, wow, this this guy made me curious about water and, and I want to learn a little bit more. And you guys have actually a really great website and people can become members and actually you have a whole learning portal. So it's really neat, like what's what's offered to people, too. So I, I get real deep into some practical charge conditions and health, human health and plant health. So we've had like uh, research farms. So we're not just metadata or reading other people's stuff. We're actually hands on doing the work ourselves to, to verify older systems and bring them modern because we've advanced in some ways. And if we use our advancements with the old principle knowledge, um, there's really good help in there for, you know, how to help balance the human body's energy and how to measure it. It was simple, cost effective, cheap stuff. You yeah. know what it really means, what what most people don't know what pH means. Yeah, we, we talk about it all the time, you know, and, you know, I would say pH means speed just to give people a little hint of how it all boils down. Alkali is the brakes on a race car. Acid is the accelerator. And if you want that car to go around that track fast, you need good both. Mm. That's simple. Yeah. If somebody says, hey, we just got brakes. I'm like, yeah, you're still sitting there on board, <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> Where's your accelerator? So simple boil downs, but some very. Um, more sophisticated, deeper understanding in it. And those are in the webinars. Um, and, you know, you can fast forward through parts you don't understand. That's the good thing about it. Grab some tools out of there that are helpful. So it goes beyond a little bit beyond just here's water and all about water. It's about here's how water plays the overall role in this energy balance. And really it's male and female energies and uh, they swap. So you got male breaks and female breaks and, Male would be tend to be like sharper or more aggressive breaking and that you did some turns you do that and some turns you don't. So there's yeah. this endless technique and style. And I think for human beings to get closer to their soul and not have it drift off into theology so deep that it's confusing, that uh, water is probably one of the best ways to get a better relationship with your own soul and the earth itself. So that's that. And then uh, that's about all I would finish with. That's awesome. Uh, all right, let's do a quick uh, lightning round of questions uh, and then we'll wrap it up, okay? All right, cool. You know, I'm curious, man, what are some choices that you made that you think made you who you are today? Um, one of them was just making a full commitment to water once my intuition said this was something different. My life changed from that day forward. Prior to that, I was like, eh, I'm bored with this. So I'm going to do something else for a living. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my life. You know, and then it came to a point where I was given so many gifts about the inside secrets of water that I'm like, well, I'm rather certain I'm supposed to share these with other people. Thank that God was the most major event that ever happened in my life. Yeah. I'm curious, you know, who's someone you mentioned all these amazing um, from philosophers to researchers to Tesla. I'm wondering, I mean, even and it doesn't have to be it could be these these could be the people that you're going to name or it could be somebody even more alive today or modern. But is there anybody that, you know, inspires you in the health and wellness world that you follow uh, around today still? It doesn't have to be. I mean, that's why I'm asking, because 
you've got so much great. I mean, I, I love just the more I'm, I talk with people like yourself or Ian Mitchell, and I'm just like always blown away by, I love that you said that, that like, you're like, dude, all this work has been done before. It's just the more I start to learn about guys like Tesla and Rife, I'm like, holy cow, these guys knew things 200 years ago, or was it a hundred years? I mean, they, they knew things and they were on the cutting edge. And it's, I, I just feel grateful that there's people like you that I feel like are doing their work again, because that let's just face it, big pharma on, like you said, the, the, Amer the, the medical, so they just tore it up and said, uh, you know, Rife and Tesla, their labs are from what I understand from historically were just destroyed. So mm -hmm. that, that not, and so, um, I just and feel it, grateful that there's people like you that are furthering the knowledge and saying, Hey, finding something here. And I'm, it's so cool to see that these guys did it too. Yeah. So. And, and each one of them, when you get into their work and I, my answer would be rife more on the health side and then Baisham uh, before that, which I believe is why rife was spending 20 hours a day under the microscope is because he believed in pleomorphism versus germism. And he was going, he was attempting to make that argument. And along the way, um, that is part of how you understand the defense against the, so I, I've worked with Rife microscopes and the back engineering of them and some people that are way beyond me. And I'm thankful for them because they boil it down for me. They kept going down that rabbit hole and uh, their elders, you know, my elders that simplify and teach me things that I just absolutely am grateful for. And I'm interested in it. I don't take that uh, kind of, all oh, these evil people ruined it for all of this. I take it as a what is, this is what is, yep. and I'm not afraid to change it and uh, talk about it. And I never will be, y you know, that's, uh, I've been doing this a long time now. And I just think it is so cool that why would you rip this from youth's excitement about doing practical things in the world? Because if you look into a rife microscope, it's like going into outer space. You're seeing things that no one has ever seen before. Right. And I haven't looked into very advanced ones because nobody's really duplicated it all that well. But we went far enough to see that it was possible and uh, come up with some practical solutions in that world of understanding cancer and what it is and what it isn't. And there's some really cool stuff there about human pregnancy, actually, that teaches us about cancer because, you know, the human zygote is born as a single cell with no nucleus. And that's the definition of cancer. So for yeah. nine weeks, we start out as a ball of cancer. How does that happen? And why does the body allow that to happen? And there's some mechanisms that are occurring, right? And so, you know, let's just say cancer was a bioweapon. I'm not saying it is, but what are the mechanisms of that bioweapon? Cancer itself is not a bioweapon. That's just yeast growing. Yeah. And then it gets in a group and it becomes a fungus or a mycelium, whatever you want to call a group single cell with no nucleus. Yep. Right. But there's it's an incubator for things that are pretty nasty. And so the, these critters are all smart. Right. They're in your body. And when they network together, they're intelligent. You yeah. can study all that intelligence of the critters. And I've had experience with that where the critters like, you know, they were doing things in my body and they're intelligent about how they're doing it. That might be why, like, if you've never eaten sugar all your life and all of a sudden you start craving sugar a lot of it, it's a good sign that your microbiome has taken hold and yeah. you're going to have to do something about it because this will get worse, right? That's simple. Yeah. Yep. It's just simple. Why am I eating sugar now? And I'm like, oh, there's a bigger, you got to address that now because if you wait, it's going to be a, a tussle. It's going to be yeah. a fight, you know, Candido, yeah. Candido will throw you Candido around like you're a rag growth, doll. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling a client about that the other day. We were talking about sugar uh, cravings. I said, well, you might have something else going on, but let's, 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 Let's talk. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So rife, rife, or Royal it. Raymond rife. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any, you dropped some, some good ones already, but any books that you'd recommend someone read that, you know, had a huge impact on, on your life? Yeah, I would say uh, Victor Schauberger's books because they're not full of math and, and it's more uh, subjective and philosophical uh, in this field. Right. I got a couple of other guys in race engines and stuff where I really dig their stuff, yeah. but staying on topic of uh, Victor Schauberger and Callum Coates is who does the translation because Victor didn't speak English. And uh, he was very careful to not screw up the translation over the years. And he dedicated his life to sharing what Victor Schauberger got. And I'm very dedicated to bringing it to practical uh, implement. Yeah. And awesome. his books, are, his books are really great to read on, on, 
the, the depths of water and how nature works. So you have nature as teachers, you know, there's about four or five books that are written and any one of them's all, all the way into free energy, so-called free energy. This water will play a role in that too, going into the future of more efficient energy systems, as I'd like to say. Yeah. So, and then, yeah. um, you know, any rituals or hacks or practices that anything that you do like on a regular basis? I'm curious. Um, I do do pretty much live on uh, uh, dosing of what we call our carbon gene unit to start the day. And I'm a big tester with myself. So even though I know things work, I'll stop doing them for two months and then go back to doing them to look at yeah. what's going. I do that with all my animals too, even though I probably shouldn't, um, you know, I'll take them off the good stuff for a month and I'll go, yep, that thing is going downhill again. And I'll put them back on usually like sick animals, you know, chronic, you know, stuff. Um, where you can test well. So all, all my animals historically either hit an age or a point where they became chronic with something. So that was, I even had a dog that would help me develop water because she would approve certain waters or not when I would lay samples on. She was 100% aware of what I was doing. Yeah. So when I was doing lab tests at the home lab, she would sit behind me and just stare at my head until I laid the samples down on the ground and wow. she would pick one of them. Right. So super cool there. Um, my ritual is basically with the carbon gene, which has a built in magnetic array and it has uh, it's like it built as an incubator for the water, you, like depth chambers, like they're starting to build them out of Shungite now where you go inside and you deprive yourself of senses and get quiet and water. Yeah. And so a lot of the depth chamber manufacturers call us and they want to know, you know, well, what if we lined it with Shungite, you know, that blocks radiation more effectively. It also has an effect. Absolutely. That would be a great thing in my opinion for a depth chamber. So we, the carbon gene is basically a overnight charging. And then we set the fridge to 39 and we use the magnetic array to put extra charge uh, life force. That work is based on von Reichenbach from, I believe the late 1800s or could be seven, late 1700s. And he used sensitives to study the energy fields around magnets. And so we put an accelerating um, torsion field in the water by via the magnet in the past research, the Shungite, as well as nanoparticles of gold and silver and Ormus. And we charge this water up overnight. And basically I give gratitude and thanks to the water and a quick meditation in the morning. And I drink that before coffee, before anything else whatsoever. And what I found out is my day just was clearer and went better when I did that. Mm. And then uh, when I come home from work or if I'm at lunch, I do it again. So it just goes back in the fridge three to four, five times a day. And that's my ritual with water is using one of our original units in development that I made, you know, early on, you know, so it kind of has a, you know, an early birth in the design structure. So yeah. that, that's my basic ritual that I do other than more routine stuff, like yeah. trying to exercise and walk in nature and breathe, stop and breathe. breathe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing, dude. I love that. Uh, last but not least, man, where can people find you and the good work at, uh, you know, at your company, at Natural Action Technology? Uh, naturalaction.com or naturalactionwater.com. Either of those work. And uh, we have social media channels, too, if you want to follow there. Uh, Todd Shipman does a great job with that. So we're always educating and sharing and uh, we support, you know, everybody in this industry who does the, the vi water vitalization or, or living water. So uh, chances are over nothing and no attention. Almost every one of these technologies that are out there are going to give you an added improvement to whatever water you are using. So I'm really gracious that we're not the only ones doing it. And worldwide, there is a handful of people and uh, I attempt to work with them in harmony so we can all move forward together Yeah, regardless of the results. That's beautiful. Jonathan Butts from uh, Natural Action Technology. Thanks so much for being on the show, man. Yeah, thank you so much, Joel. It was awesome. Appreciate it.